Hello everyone, my name is Protesilaos, also known as Prot. In this video, I will demonstrate a new package that I have written for Emacs. This one is called Beframe. That is one word, Beframe. What Beframe does is it isolates buffers, lists of buffers, on a per frame basis. And this allows you to have smaller lists, more uh, focused lists of buffers that are specific to the context uh, you are uh, in, specific to the project you are working on or pertinent to the current uh, workflow. And we will see how this works in practice. Uh, what I want to do in this video is demonstrate uh, how we go about using Beframe and to understand what the value proposition is. Uh, what I have here is just some uh, sample configuration. Part of it is uh, from my own personal configuration, but we will see it all in action. The first uh, point of entry for Beframe is the command mx Beframe switch buffer. And what this does is it produces a list of buffers that, as I said, are specific to the given frame. This is a beframed list of buffers. We see it over here. I have five candidates in this list of buffers, uh, so I can switch between them however I want. Uh, let's uh, see, let's compare this with the generic switch to buffer command, the standard the way to switch buffers in Emacs. And I will see now that I have 28 candidates. You can see it over here. These are candidates from all my frames, all the open frames, and I can see them over here. Uh, of course, when you work with Emacs uh, for an extended period of time, you accumulate hundreds of buffers, and it can be difficult to narrow the list to what is relevant to the task at hand. Whereas with Beframe, you just produce the Beframed list of buffers and you already have a more focused uh, set of candidates uh, to select from or to operate on. So this is the first point of entry to Beframe, the ability to select the buffer via, uh, with uh, MX or with a key binding uh, via the mini buffer uh, completion interface. The other way is to use a buffer menu. First, let's uh, use the standard buffer menu, MX buffer menu. By default, this is bound to Control X, Control B. Personally, I remove that binding and I replace it with a Beframe specific binding, and we will see that in action. But let's uh, produce the generic buffer menu now. You see now I have a long list uh, from all the buffers I have open. Of course, this is not too long because I started Emacs a while ago just for the purposes of this demo, but in an actual session, this list would run in the hundreds uh, very easily or maybe more than a few hundreds. It could be a thousand buffers for sure. Uh, but I don't want to have uh, to, my, to have to filter through such a list. I want to have something more focused uh, for what I am doing. Uh, let's uh, use the Beframe equivalent of this. I will invoke it uh, with MX. MX, Beframe, and then Buffer Menu. Beframe Buffer Menu is the command. And you will notice that this one here uh, has only uh, the list of buffers that are specific to this frame. So I can use this menu. It's already small. It's already focused and I can switch to buffers from here. I don't have to uh, worry about it. Here is the buffer, and I don't have to uh, worry about uh, doing some uh, advanced search, uh, trying to have that, uh, to deal with that cognitive load. Uh, I have none of that. I just produce a small list, and it's already very easy to filter. So these are the two uh, points of entry to uh, be framed. Beframe works automatically with new frames. You don't have to uh, enable the mode. Here I have it enabled, but uh, this is just in the demo. I haven't actually enabled it. It's disabled right now. Uh, but I can go ahead here and in this space, I will create a new frame. 
by default you create a new frame uh, with the prefix control x 5 5 and then you type in any command you want and this will create a new frame uh, with that uh, command uh, so let's say that i want to do um, control x and control uh, sorry control x p p to switch to another project uh, let's switch to um, denote for example uh, let's switch to the denote project and you see now uh, that this has uh, been opened in a new uh, frame uh, i did this with the standard emacs commands nothing uh, specific to be framed here uh, maybe i should uh, enlarge uh, the gap so that it's easier for you to uh, tell the frames apart uh, so i am on uh, the right uh, hand side over here uh, so i am here i have just opened the new frame let's see what the buffer list looks like here you see that i only have uh, those buffers in this frame so when i invoke the beframe command the specific beframe command it gives me the beframed list of buffers if I use the standard the switch to buffer command, I get the global list of buffers in this scenario. Let's go back here and let's see. You see here that I don't have uh, denote uh, anywhere. Let's have this as well. You see here I have denote, but here I don't have denote. So they are already isolated. They are already not interfering with each other which is very important and it's what Beframe is all about. I was able to do this without using anything. This is just how the Beframe uh, commands work. They have a filter predicate. This is a standard uh, mechanism. There are no dirty hacks involved. There is a standard mechanism here that filters buffers that belong to their current frames that you open from the current frame so let's open some more buffers here it doesn't really matter what those buffers are what they are doing but let's see the list you can see now that the list is a bit longer let's go here and you see that here the list has not grown at all what i did in the other frame does not influence this frame with regard to the list of uh, buffers so that's wonderful um, the thing here is that we are using the beframe specific command to switch buffers. So we are using beframe switch buffer, this one, uh, to uh, produce a, a mini buffer uh, interface for our buffers. Or we are, are using the beframe command for the menu over here. So that's uh, wonderful, that's uh, nice. Uh, but we can get some more uh, value out of beframe by enabling the beframe mode what the beframe mode does is that uh, one it automatically renames uh, frames uh, with an option to decide uh, what function should be used so how the frames should be renamed uh, two it creates again optionally a scratch buffer for frames uh, so that is specific to the given frame instead of the generic scratch buffer and three it allows you to specify a list of commands that should automatically produce a new frame instead of you doing control x 5 5 or maybe control x 5 2 or maybe the tear off window command that i have over here uh, you can see the key binding for that that's impossible to type in forget about it but uh, anyhow you can create uh, frames manually or you can just have a list of commands that when invoked will uh, automatically create a new frame provided that beframe mode is enabled so we will we will now enable beframe mode and we will see this in action i will produce a new frame here but let's go to my original frame uh, <coughs> sorry when we uh, activate beframe mode it uh, changes the standard read buffer function and what this means is that when you invoke the regular switch to buffer command it will now behave uh, in a beframed 
fashion, it will only list buffers that are pertinent to the current frame. Again, this is not a hack, this is a standard mechanism, and I am uh, making use of this uh, mechanism. Uh, so, you no longer have switch to buffer uh, operate on the global list uh, by default. Uh, and I think this is desired, so you don't even have to provide the key binding for this one, you don't really need this one, because now you can have control XB, the regular control XB, and you have like the standard list right there. Uh, but now that I have enabled the minor mode, I want to open a new project. Notice that I have in my beframe functions in frames, this is, this is the list of functions that will produce a new frame. Uh, here I have um, the, a specific function that applies to the project.el library of Emacs. And what this function does basically is that uh, when I uh, create a new project with beframe mode enabled, it will uh, make a new frame and uh, put me in that context directly. So as I said, I want to open a new frame here in this area to the bottom right. So I am here to the left and I will now do control X PP. You remember before that I did control X 5 5, so the other frame prefix, and then control X PP. Uh, whereas now I just do uh, the latter. And I will select uh, one of my projects. Let's go to the modus themes or whatever, it doesn't really matter. And now I have created another frame over here. You can see where I am. And let me now do a, a list of buffers here. You see, I only have those buffers. Let's, uh, visit, let's uh, visit some uh, buffers here. Let's open some uh, buffers. It doesn't really matter which ones. And let's see the list. And I can see the list of buffers here. Let's go back here where we were. What is the list of buffers here looking like? You see a different list of buffers here. And what about the original frame? And you see the original frame has its own list of buffers. Um, notice what I said about the frame-specific scratch buffer. Uh, this frame over here, I opened it manually when the frame mode was uh, not enabled. It was still disabled. And for this reason, I do not have a, a buffer, a scratch buffer specific to this uh, frame. Whereas here I have such a scratch buffer, you can see it over here. And this allows me to um, work in that buffer. So here it's a clean buffer, I can work on it without interfering with uh, the scratch buffers of other frames. Uh, whereas uh, this uh, frame over here does not have such a buffer, it only has, it only has rather uh, access to the global uh, scratch buffer, the generic uh, scratch buffer. So there is that. The other thing to note here is that uh, the frame that I opened with BFrame has a name associated with it. Uh, I uh, have modified my mode line to uh, print the name uh, next to the name of the buffer. And this frame is called Modus Themes. Uh, it doesn't really matter how it is called. You can define your own BFrame rename function and this uh, will rename frames according to uh, the algorithm, the pattern that you will give, uh, but this is just the default uh, for you to have something to work with. Uh, so this has its uh, own name, whereas this one doesn't have a name associated with it, so it will use whatever Emacs uses by default. Of course, you can do MX, set frame name and give it any name you want, uh, now it has the generic name, so it's uh, hard to uh, identify, but you can give it a name and you will identify it uh, this way. Uh, but personally, I think that the renaming uh, uh, option is a very good option. Um, let's go back to the original frame. I have said that we are beframing buffers. We are isolating buffers on a per frame basis. But we can always access the global buffer list or the buffer list of any frame because this is still a single Emacs instance. I am not running uh, uh, the daemon. I am not using Emacs client. 
I am not spawning multiple Emacs instances. This is one Emacs and I am just beframing the list of buffers. So let's, uh, while I am here on the left, to my left, on the original uh, frame, I want to inspect the buffer list of the modus themes, for example, the frame associated with the modus themes. So I will do control U, so the universal uh, prefix argument, and then I will do uh, the beframe uh, so be buffer menu command with the control U prefix. And notice here that it is giving me a list of frames to select uh, from. And I have the current frame. I have another frame that I created for demo purposes. It's You cannot see it, actually. My home frame as well. And here is the modus themes. Let's go to this one. So I select the frame, and this produces the list of buffers that are specific to that frame. And I can see this list of buffers here. And this is wonderful because it means that if, for whatever reason, I need to bring a buffer from another frame to my frame, I can do it uh, like this very easily. Of course, I can still access the global buffer list with buffer menu, so I can find uh, any buffer from here. Uh, it's not uh, disappearing, it's still uh, there, but it is not uh, available when you do the switch to buffer or the standard, uh, the beframe uh, buffer menu command. So this is the idea, folks, with Beframe. It is a, a wonderful package. Uh, ever since I developed it, I have removed the uh, tab bar mode from my configuration. I no longer use tabs. I think they are inefficient at scale and they are hard to identify. Uh, so that's the one thing. And they also take up uh, space. Whereas here I can uh, leverage the full power of my window manager. Uh, the fact that it is styling, the fact that it has many workspaces, so I have much more uh, freedom with a frame-oriented uh, workflow. So I don't use the tab bar mode anymore, and I also don't use iBuffer anymore. Again, that's also built into Emacs, because the whole point of iBuffer is to filter a long list of buffers. But when you have beframed lists of buffers, you don't really need uh, I buffer, so you can now uh, see the bliss, uh, you know, enjoy uh, the minimal life that buffer menu uh, gives you and not worry about all the noise that you get with I buffer. Uh, so that's all for today, folks. Thank you very much for your attention. Beframe is available from the GNU Elpa package archive. There is a manual, of course, uh, associated with it. As with all my packages, the manual is compre comprehensive. Even though this is a small package, it doesn't really matter. And you can always find uh, the list of all my Emacs packages on my website, protesilaos.com maybe I can write it here actually uh, like this protesilaos.com is my website and forward slash emacs you can find all my emacs packages the ever expanding list of emacs packages that's all for today folks thank you very much for your attention goodbye for now and take care